This is Bitcoin's return versus S&P 500 and gold over the past 10 years. You can look at the numbers. They do not lie. If you hold long term, Bitcoin has gone up. If you are worried about the rocky roads and the 50 to 60 percent drawbacks over the short periods of time because this is a new asset and it's got a low market cap, then this may not be for you. But I will say that over time, the numbers are right in your face. I don't even have to read them. You can see who the winner here is. News is temporary, beliefs are forever. What's going on guys? It's Matt here from Matt's Crypto. And I know you're probably freaking out right now because Bitcoin is at $32,000. And let's be honest, it doesn't feel very good being at 32,000 after it was at 64,000 just about a month ago. But today we're gonna walk through 10 different reasons why the peak has not been hit yet for this cycle. The cycle continues to run on and although there is a ton of fear, uncertainty, and doubt in the market, a bunch of news coming out that is dropping Bitcoin's price, you and I need to continue to hold on tight because the run is not over yet. Now, although this is not financial advice, there are a lot of different indicators that people use to determine where we are in the cycle, what the price of Bitcoin is at compared to on-chain metrics, and we're going to take a deeper look into all of that today. So if you find anything useful from this video, definitely give it a big thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel if you have not already. We post every single day, keeping you up to date with Bitcoin, altcoins, Ethereum, and everything else in the cryptocurrency market. If you guys are not yet following me, on Twitter at Matt Cabuzio. Definitely go ahead and give me a follow. Links down below for that. But are you also going to want to follow this guy, Alan AU11? This man has been absolutely amazing throughout the entire cycle for on chain metrics with Bitcoin and other altcoins. Right off the bat, you can see he's saying all indications show that Bitcoin is nowhere near its peak in the current cycle. Also, Bitcoin is not in its bear phase either. There's a ton of debate going on right now in the crypto universe and just amongst friends and family about where Bitcoin's at. Is the price going to go up? Is it going to go down? But more so where we are in the overall market. Because realistically, guys, this is not a game of days. This is a game of months and years. The first chart we're looking at is the MVRVZ score. Now, don't even worry about that, what that means. The point here is that the value is at 1.8. And as you can see here, every previous cycle peak has gone into this red area. MVRVZ number is over roughly a seven, seven and a half, which gets into this red zone here. When we have the euphoric blow off top and it peaks a lot of times even above the red, almost near the 10, the top of the score. Now you can see this year we are not, we haven't even made it to the red zone yet. We did get pretty high up there and I will say on previous peaks, if you look at the 2013, 2014 run, you can see even the first top of the 2013 run did go beyond the red zone here. We haven't hit that yet and we've come way back down around two, which is pretty much on par with anywhere near the middle of any other cycle. So we're really not far off and we definitely haven't hit the peak according to this score. This is obviously one indicator, but this is one of 10 we're going to look at today. They kind of show you that the peak's probably not been hit yet in this cycle, and maybe this cycle may be a little bit different than previous cycles. However, we have not hit the ultimate top price, the euphoric blow off top as we have in the past quite yet. Now, this next chart here is the one plus year hodl wave or hold wave. And this one to me is not as important of a chart, but it is an interesting one because it has highlighted previous peaks based on how many people are holding their position over one year. You can see if we go back in time here, 2014, the red dot here is the peak of the cycle in price. And it shows a mark where people are starting to sell off their position. People that have been holding for a long time over a year or longer are realizing, hey, this is the blow off top. This is the price is getting absolutely astronomical at this point. Let's sell some, let's lock in some profits and they start to sell. Therefore, the overall hold ratio or hodl ratio is decreasing in percentage as more and more people sell off their position. You can see here again in 2018, the very peak, we were on the way down just before the bottom of how many people are holding for a year plus. And it's almost the same exact timing as the first one. As the price gets to its peak, less and less people are holding their position. They're selling to lock in their profits. And then we ultimately hit a bottom right after the blow off top. You can see here the green marks as well are when the low points are hit and people are really starting to accumulate their position and hold on to their position. Mainly because a lot of people that have been holding for a while or that really believe in Bitcoin are not going to be selling their position at a huge loss. They believe in this long term like myself 
And there's no point in selling now when we're potentially at a huge loss, locking in those losses. We'd rather just hold, know that over time Bitcoin has gone up, and we'll look at that in a second, and continue to hold and gather more Bitcoin if we can. We're definitely starting to fall out again. The question really remains here, is this the same as these previous two where things are below a certain percentage? 40% you can see here. We're on 40%. This one's probably around 45% or give or take. We are significantly higher in percentage here. We are probably about 50% and he actually marks it here. 54% right now and 47% seems to be the point at which previous cycles marked the low or uh, the low amount on percentage of people holding for over a year and the high price, the peak price of that cycle. And you can see right here, we are still at 54%. We are nowhere near the 47% of the last two or even 40% of the last one. So if this is any indication, it's potential that a lot of the holders are still holding because they believe, hey, we got more room to run. I'm in this boat as well. I think a lot of people watching that are new to this might be freaking out and selling their positions because they're scared of losing money. They're scared that they just lost a lot of money. But you got to believe in this long term if you're going to make serious money in Bitcoin and if you're going to invest in the future of technology and finance. Our next chart is the realized HODL ratio. And again, it's another green and red chart where you can really easily see where people hold and where people sell. When we hit those peaks in the red and it comes back off, that signals we're going into a bear market. Hits the peak of red, comes back off into a bear market. The reason I like this ratio a little bit better is the 2013, the first peak you can see here, didn't get up to the red. And a lot of people are saying potentially this year is a repeat of 2013 where we have a double top. And this will be the first top right here and the second top much higher into the red. Right now you can see we're around the same area as far as the HODL ratio, the realized HODL ratio, as that first top in 2013. Is it possible we had that steep correction like they did here? Not as accurate to the price as you can see the price is up here in the, in the black. Uh, that comes down, but this has kind of gone sideways, kind of consolidated since we've hit this top right here, since we've hit this kind of like hill over $64,000. Now we're coming back down. If this comes back down a little bit, that'll make more sense, and it's going to look kind of a lot like what we looked like in the double top in 2013. So it's very possible with the HODL ratio, it's mapping us out for a repeat of 2013 cycle. We'll see if that happens. The only reason I don't love this theory is because this is a true top. It's a euphoric blow off that comes off like 67 70% and then continues upward to another blow off top that really drops hard. Our run this time is not quite the same. You can see this is the actual price right here. It's the same thing. It really maps it out the same way. Here, we really don't have a top. We really don't have a crazy phase. We had like a three, four month period of going from about 50K to 64K, bouncing around in there. And now we're coming back down to 30K, maybe even 25K. To me, that's not really a blow off top. That's not really a pointed peak. And for that reason, I'm I'm having a hard time getting behind the whole 2013 repeat. This next chart here is probably one of my favorite ones that I want to really look at with you guys because it kind of plays into all the emotional and psychological factors that are going on right now, especially with all the news and the fear, uncertainty, and doubt. This chart is beautiful, first of all, because it's a rainbow. You can see here that the red is capitulation, which means it's, it's marking a low where it bounces off a bottom. Orange is hope and fear. Yellow is optimism and anxiety. Green is belief and denial, depending on which way we're going. And then blue is euphoria and greed. In the bull runs, we go from a yellow up to a green where things are really believing. And then it goes into a blue stage where it's euphoria and greed. And that is the top. When we hit blue, it has always been a top in the past. You can see here in 2018, it barely hit the blue, but it's still there. We were in green for a while, bouncing around. And then we got up to the blue. These are all marked out in green from pullback, pullback, still in that green area. Right now, we've had the same thing. We've been up. We almost hit the blue here when we hit 64,000 peak, but we are still bouncing around in the green. Now, if you compare this to previous cycles, we've actually just hit yellow, which is back to the optimism and anxiety phase. This, if you look at previous bull runs, happens a few times, right? In 2013, we hit the euphoric blow off top in blue, and we came back down almost into orange for a second there, off of that huge pullback on the first peak, and then we worked our way all the way back up to blue again. So that one's definitely quite a bit of a range. I think the 2017 run's a little bit more reasonable to look at. I think it's more consistent with what we're going to have this year, potentially, and even this one. As we're going up, we get to the green about halfway, we come back down and revisit the yellow get back up to the green. We almost come back to revisit the yellow two more times on our way up. Even though the prices continue to be higher, we almost get back down to those same levels of yellow because people and their emotions and the news coming out continue to run pullbacks and that's totally normal and healthy in a bull run. 
This time's a little bit different because we have a much bigger percentage pullback than even last run. Last run, the highest percentage pullback was about 43%. This pullback, we've hit 53% so far, and that is significantly larger than the previous bull run. So that's something to keep note of. But the thing here we are looking at in this chart is that we're still in the yellow. We've just breached the yellow. We're going to be in yellow for a little bit if we consolidate for a while. But as long as we get back up into green, and if we see blue, that is a better sign that we're peaking this cycle. We have not seen blue, and we have not come back down from blue. So it's safe to say, according to history, this chart as well, we have not peaked yet. The next chart we can look at here is the realized cap hodl waves. I love the names of all these charts because they're absolutely ridiculous, and there's just so many of them. But all these are different ways to look at where we're at. What's happened in history? Can we mark out patterns? Can we say history repeats itself? So far, yes. But basically, this is showing how long people are holding their positions, all the way from 24 hours in the dark red up to purple. More or less, the pattern we're looking for is three peaks. Each cycle has a series of three peaks with the retail and newer investors really pumping, dropping off, pumping again, dropping off, and then the third one tends to be the highest and the actual peak. You can see the correlation with the price here as it spikes up. All the retail investors come in, all the new investors come in. Then as soon as the blow off top occurs, they sell and it comes back down to earth here. It's really hard to tell if this is one peak or two peaks. In the past, you have a very clear set of peaks. They come up, they come down, they come up, they come down, and they're very clear. Here, we really do have a come up, come down, come back up a little bit and come down. So I could say that we're on the second peak. Potentially, I could argue that. But either we're on the first or second peak here and we're not on the third. So if this chart repeats itself, if history repeats itself again here, we have yet more to run. And the third peak has always been higher than the second and the first one, sometimes significantly higher, diminishing returns on the last year. So it's possible this might not be as high, but it would still be higher than the peak we've seen so far. The next chart we have here is another one of your favorite charts. It's the Puel multiple and it's a pink and green chart again. Same story, same song and dance. The peak hits the red and it comes back down, which marks a bear market. And then we come back down to the green, which is usually about the low, and then we wake our way back up. You can see right here, it's the same thing. We have not hit the pink. We have not come back down from the pink. We are simply kind of floating around in between the two right now. So it's safe to say that we probably haven't hit the peak, and we probably haven't entered a bear market either. Our next chart here is a scale on percentage of return, the cumulative return after the halving. And basically right here in the neon green this is this year the epoch three and then the last cycle was the 2017 2018 peak cycle and you can see right here that's in the blue this is the cumulative return after the halving you can see here similar to our halving tracker that we look at quite a lot in this channel this one is showing us we were well above the 2017 run we have now come back right to about where the 2017 run is in terms of return on investment so it is safe to say at the moment we are on pace with 2017. The difference here is that the drawback, again, was a lot larger than 2017. The timing, similar. You can see right here, this comes back and has a nice peak and comes back up. It's very possible that we do see that V-shaped recovery over the next couple days and weeks. But I have to say, based on what I'm seeing right now and the big pullback of 53%, I don't think that's likely. I think it's more likely that we will have some sideways consolidation action for a while, and hopefully we can regain pace with the 2017 run. If that does happen, as you can see here, the blue, we are right now on pace again, just like we saw before in the other chart. If that does happen and we do end up following closely to the 2017 run, we can still expect somewhere near a 200 to $300,000 peak, which is absolutely monstrous considering we're at $30,000 right now. That would be almost a 10x from our current position. Now, I don't want to get your hopes up here because I do not think that's likely this time. I think this cycle is going to be a little different. I don't think they're always going to repeat themselves exactly because people know about the cycles now. There's institutions. There's way more people trying to drive up and down the price and manipulate the market in different ways. It's very possible that we do see a hundred to $200,000 Bitcoin in the next year or two. I still think that's very possible. This chart, again, just shows you another way of looking at that, whether it's cumulative return or whether it's the halving tracker that shows us based on prices of previous cycles where we would end up this cycle. As long as we keep pace with the green, with the 2017 cycle, I'm going to feel very, very good about cycles continuing to repeat. This is still the only chart that remains nearly unbeaten from very early on in Bitcoin's existence. The stock to flow model and price. Now you can see right here, this is the basic stock to flow. We have the price of Bitcoin in red and we have basically the range that Bitcoin should stay within over the next several years. It's even mapping it out to 2027 right now. And obviously he will adjust slightly based on where Bitcoin's price goes. But as you can see in the past, 
the price doesn't really leave this inner blue band very much. It's pretty much dead accurate when it comes to where the price of Bitcoin should be. The line is the stock to flow price and the outer bands are basically the limits within which the price should stay if the model is going to continue to be correct. You can see there's a few times where the red price has gone outside the model and that is when there's the euphoric blow off top. It has never gone below the lower blue band here. It's dipped in a couple times. This was right around 2019. And then you can see it almost hit it again in the 2020 March crash. But you can see for the most part, it stayed within the inner blue band. And right now we are testing that bottom of the blue band. I would not be surprised to see us come and dip a little bit into the light blue band. But the creator, 100 trillion, basically says the upper band is 120K. The model price is where we should be right now, 60K. Lower band is 30K. It's only not okay for this model if we stay at $32,000 for multiple months, but he expects the price will bounce back in the next few days, weeks. This was, I believe today, yes, this morning. And you can see here, this is the full price, price model stock to flow. We are still within the dark blue band. I would not be surprised if we stay uh, a little bit in this lighter blue band, which is probably a great time to accumulate more Bitcoin if you look at history and you look at this model and believe in this model. The only time that it has happened and it is somewhat reasonable to say we should break out of it is euphoric blow off top where things are absolutely out of control. Hype is through the roof and the numbers actually don't make sense at that point. That's probably a good sign to sell. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you learned anything new today, definitely leave a like. It helps me out so much getting the channel growing for the YouTube algorithm. And if you guys have not subscribed already, what are you waiting for? We're going to be helping you out every single day. Stay on track with your investments in crypto. We'll see you guys all next time. Have a fantastic day.